Will Kirk and his group of legionaries be able to untangle the web of mystery involving the strange trickster god from another world? Well, let's hop into the pages of Legion of X issue number four and find out. Alrighty then, so this issue jumps around a ton, so you're just gonna have to bear with me on this one. As we join the story, we're reintroduced to that little Danny DeVito mutant we've been seeing all throughout this arc. At first, we thought he killed his wife, but now we know that's not the case. Kirk and the others are attempting to reform this guy, and part of that process is him having to guard the jar where they've hidden the skin jacker. Here's the thing though, some unforeseen third party ends up breaking in, killing the poor little dwarf guy and releasing Switch the Skin Jacker all over again, completely undoing all the good work that our heroes have tried to do over the last three issues. Now where is Nightcrawler right now? Well, him and Weaponless Zen had made it back from the Astral Sea at the end of the previous issue thanks to a weird ghost fire banshee. And they figured the best way to celebrate their continued existence was to find give in to all that sexual tension that has been mounting since the series began. Uh, apparently, Kirk is very good with his tail, but also Zen isn't big on seconds. She says the first time was recreation any more than that, and it's simply indulgence. Of course, it wouldn't be a Legion of X story if their post-coitus pillow talk didn't end up becoming highly philosophical. Zen can't possibly wrap her head around how Nightcrawler can build a religion like the Spark, one that doesn't have punishment or reward or ultimate damnation. How are you supposed to keep anyone in line if you don't threaten them, right? Every religion keeps people in line. Nightcrawler says that he wanted rules that could be easily bended. Because, you know, there's lots of shades of grey in the world, and their religion for mutant kind should be able to support that. Now, elsewhere on the island, we get an impromptu reunion for the extended Xavier family. K. Marco finally works up the courage to ask his half-brother Xavier why exactly he was the one who voted for him to not join Nightcrawler team full-time as a legionary. Xavier says that Juggernaut just can't be trusted to not bulldoze half the island looking for someone that he didn't find. Now, Legion, doing what he's been doing pretty much of this entire series, actually takes up for his half-uncle Kane, saying that he was very valuable in tracking down the skin jacker and bringing him to justice. David also has his own theories about how someone like Switch could be going undetected for so long. Legion believes that maybe Switch is hiding out in a no place, you know, those special weird tumors on the Krakoan Island. The ones that Moira actually used to avoid all sorts of detection, Xavier says that they got rid of those after Moira was ousted, but David doesn't believe him, thinking that a skin jacker had already gotten to him and forced Xavier to forget. David also really lets loose at his dad and calls out one of the biggest hypocrisies of Krakoa as a nation, and that is you can't build a brand new nation state on the bedrock of lies and deceit, because despite what he and Magneto and everyone else on the council might think, they are infallible human beings like anyone else. They can be tampered with. And sometimes, like right now, it feels like their left hands don't even know what their right hands are doing half the time. We also discover that Legion had discovered about these nowhere places thanks to Warlock. As a rule, Warlock tends to try and not get too involved in the day-to-day -day operations of mutant kind because, well, he is a robot and the mutants and the robots are kind of stuck in a death battle right now. But Legion was nice enough to inform Warlock about the passing of his father, and because of that, Warlock felt like he owed him one. Now, when Nightcrawler finally makes it back to Legion HQ, he sees that Blob Herman has become the next victim of the Skin Jacker and is attacking everyone in sight. It would seem that despite their best efforts, Switch has only grown more powerful since last they battled, now being able to take control of bigger, stronger mutants and even control multiple different people at once. Even after destroying Glob's body, Switch's horrible astral form still proves to be a lot to contend with. Dust attempts to contain Switch, only for the creature to jump into Nightcrawler next. Which may actually have been what Nightcrawler had wanted all along. You see, from his pillow talk with Zen the Weaponless, he had actually learned what that trickster god that is empowering Switch got up to back on Erico. Apparently, this thing had a real problem with a Authority. It defaced the statues of Apocalypse and his family, destroyed a bunch of cannons, and even turned a bunch of excellent soldiers into weird blobfish just for laughs. Didn't kill anyone, though, which leads Nightcrawler to wonder if this thing can potentially be reasoned with, and indeed, inside Switch, Nightcrawler is granted an audience with the god empowering him. Turns out its name is Tumult, and it's not a single trickster god, it's a weird amalgamation chimera of trickster gods from across mythology. Hey, even Loki is in there. Nightcrawler argues are not all gods in their own way weird chimera hodgepodges, stories that keep getting told over time with new additions 
added and subtracted. Nightcrawler and Tumult actually end up arguing a lot about theology and dogma and catechism. It's all very, very fascinating stuff. The main bullet point takeaway of it is, is that Tumult is actually more the victim of Switch than anyone else. He needs someone to believe in him so he can basically continue to exist, even if that person's an evil a-hole. Nightcrawler says that maybe Tumult's problem is, is that he just needs to believe in himself a little bit more, and if he'll let him, the Legionaries will help him get sanctuary here on Krakoa, so he doesn't have to die back in Eriko. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, if Tumult needs someone to believe in him to exist, then how is he able to do all of that mischief back on Eriko? Well, the answer is he had a follower. He had an acolyte. At first, they seek to imply that maybe it was weaponless Zin herself, but in reality, it was actually weaponless Zin's master, the leader of the Inward Watch, Arbitrix. Yes, that's right, the big bad agnostic, the crazy Arakoan god killer was herself actually one of the faithful. Huh, what a twist. And so that was Legion of X issue number four, everybody, and once again, Cy Spurrier and company managed to turn in a comic that was not only very enjoyable, but also very intellectually stimulating as well. You know, I did 12 years hard time Catholic school, and I never thought that information that I gleaned there would ever be useful anywhere else, but when I read this series, I feel like it was totally worth it. This issue especially really dives into one of my favorite topics when it comes to religion, and that is the topic of hypocrisy. People who say one thing but do another. This issue also ends up being quite critical of Nightcrawler as a character, too. Zin calls him out, saying that maybe the reason he tries so hard to save people, the reason he wanted to build the spark in the first place, is because at the end of the day, he has a savior complex. And maybe, much like Tumult, he hasn't done anything for himself in a very long time, and perhaps that should change for the betterment of everyone. Overall, I really enjoyed this one. I would give it another very solid 8 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.